Greetings again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do invite you to come and join us this morning from the Piney Hill Baptist Church. This is Pastor Major H. Gilbert Sr. We're coming to you from On the Wall Ministries here in Alta Vista, Virginia. We're broadcasting here on Facebook Live, and we're just thanking God for you joining us again this morning at this hour. We know the weather is bad. Many have lost their current as well as I. And we have been struggling all morning trying to get things in line for our worship service, but we're going to praise God anyway. We just thank you again for joining us here, and we are asking that you continue to support us in our ministry. We're praying for those in our community, those that are going through, those that are dealing with the COVID issues, Lord. We pray for families that have lost loved ones, and I pray for uh, Dr. Uh, Fred Price and their family, senior, he, they lost him this week to COVID, and we pray for that church, that uh, Crenshaw Christian Center there, and we ask uh, prayers for his wife and his son that uh, they are continuously uh, the ministry there, and we ask that you will continue to pray for all of those sick and shut in. Pray for the Hubbard family. We eulogized them last weekend, and we just ask that you continue to help us to be a blessing to somebody else. But we, uh, last couple of weeks, we weren't able to have any music uh, because of uh, uh, not having the availability of music at home. But we got a little music this morning, hopefully. And we're going to give God some praise this morning. We want to have some hallelujah praise uh, this morning and, and, and continue to lift up the name of Jesus. And if I can get this thing working here, got my recorder working this morning. We thank God again. Uh, we got a little Ricky and the mighty golden stars this morning. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've been born again. Come on, let's praise him this morning. I'm on my way to heaven. Come on. Come on. I'm on my way. Consider the question, are you on your way to heaven? And uh, you got to be on your way to heaven before you can turn back. But you are you on your way to heaven? You got to make up your mind. You got to trust and believe in the Lord. He says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, thou shalt be saved. So if you're on your way to heaven, don't turn back. Don't let that old devil steal your joy. I know the weather's outside. We got ice on the trees. We got uh, electricity been knocked down. I'm coming uh, over to the store yesterday 
an electric line fell in the line of the car, had hit the electric line and pulled it off of the light line pole, but God is still in good. We had to make a U-turn, go around the long way and come back to Alta Vista anyway, but God made a way out of nowhere. But if you're on your way, don't get turned back. Things might fall in your path. Things might fall in your way, but distrust God that everything's going to be all right if you only put your trust in him. Don't turn back. You've come too far to turn back now. We're so thankful for that. Again, as I announced uh, that we're going to continue a few Sundays ago, I asked the question, are you kingdom-minded? And that became a very important message that goes out. You've got to have the mind of Christ. You've got to get your heart and mind set to be able to continue to go on. Don't turn back when things come your way. If you're kingdom-minded, you're going to keep your eyes set on the one and you're going to have your path straight to the one that's going to continue to bless you in your life. So are you kingdom-minded? That was the series that we're going to start hopefully in the next five weeks. We're going to ask uh, the, the kingdom-minded series. We're going to come out of one chapter, one chapter of the Bible. We're going to come out of Mark, the fourth chapter. You turn to the fourth chapter, and you can be there for five weeks in a row. You know, five weeks in a row, we're going to stay with Mark, the fourth chapter. Our text today is coming out of those first uh, nine verses. First nine verses of Mark, the fourth chapter. Verses 1 through 9. Now, scripture read this morning, and he began again to teach in the seaside, and there gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship. And he sat in the sea, and the whole multitude uh, was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and he said unto them in the doctrine heathen, Behold, thou went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass that he sowed, and some fell by the wayside, and some fowls of the air, they came, and they vowed it up, and some fell on stony ground, where there was not much earth. And immediately it sprang up, and because it had no depth in the earth, but when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it was had no root, it withered away. And, and some fell on, among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it out and yielded no fruit. And others fell on the good ground and did yield fruit that uh, it uh, sprang up and increased and brought forth uh, some 30, some 60, and some 100. And he said unto him, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of the holy and his righteous word. Let the household of faith say, Amen. Amen. The Kingdom Series. I want to talk to you about the Kingdom Series. A few weeks ago, again, I preached about that Kingdom Minded. So we'll continue this series of lessons that focuses on our mind of mankind in this series of parables that Jesus taught about the Kingdom of God. And, and many of us see the Kingdom of God as this celestial place that we're going to spend eternity where God abides instead of the mindset and uh, of, my, of mankind that when we embrace the character of God, we are already close to the kingdom. Uh, this year, we want to look at this inner soul and, and see how that God uh, operates inside of us to make us better, to be able to be suitable, to be able to be heirs of the kingdom. And Jesus uses this natural things to describe the kingdom so that we can relate to it in a spiritual way. You know, we need to make uh, God personal in our lives and be able to know him as he is. You know, he is not this extraterrestrial spirit that uh, doesn't know and understand us. He knows all about us. He's not so far off that he cannot touch us. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 and 15, for he, uh, we have a high priest that cannot be, uh, that which cannot be touched. We, we have not, excuse me, a high priest that cannot be touched uh, and the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points he was tempted like we are uh, yet without sin. And the kingdom of God uh, is about our relationship uh, that, of the God that created the heavens and the earth. And he desires to sow seeds of righteousness in us to produce uh, this wonderful, loving, productive, and godly man and woman of God. That's what his desire is. David said in Psalm 119, uh, 14, that I praise thee for I am but fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and, and that my soul knoweth right well. You know, uh, this can only happen when, when, when the right seed is sown into the right soil. And, and God wants us to celebrate life uh, by reaping the 
the benefits of the kingdom, living while he here on earth, he says, uh, uh, in earth as it is in heaven. He wants us to have those benefits while we are here. We don't have to wait to get over there to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. We can enjoy them down here if we get our mind and our hearts in the right mindset so and get those things in the proper perspective. So today, um, uh, at the first of this sermon of our series, a kingdom-minded series, we want to talk about the seed and the ground the seed and the ground. Uh, Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come. And and as we preach, Lord, we ask that you would just allow our hearts and minds to be in the right place. Let let the seed be sown and and let our hearts be able to uh, uh, make good ground where that seed will be able to reap the harvest of an understanding heart and a mind where Heavenly Father that will be like thine. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you in the precious name of Jesus. We do pray. Let every heart say amen, amen. The kingdom-minded series, the, the seed and the ground. You know, as we celebrate Valentine's Day, the Bible says that the only thing on earth that compares to the love uh, that God and Jesus has for his church is the love that is between a man and a woman. He says that the Bible also says God is love. And and I believe that in order for us to understand the kingdom of God, that we must understand what love is, what love is all about. The kingdom of God is such that If you don't know what love is, you'll never understand the principles of the kingdom. And and all of what God is trying to teach us in these coming weeks, you got to understand that love is our redeeming principle. You know, sometimes we talk about finances in the church and, and, and sometimes we get discussion about tithing in the church. But the problem with tithing is that tithing is a law and just uh, being uh, uh, obedient to the law of tithing sometimes you don't get the benefit side of it. You got to have a loving heart to give and in order for to give freely you got to have a loving heart to give. Giving to obey the law is one thing but giving to have a mindset of love that I would have to love to do what I do in, in order for to please God and Jesus said that if you love me that you would keep my commandments so if you obey the law tithing is because that you would love him and to keep his commandments and do those things. He also said, give it shall be given in you. Huh? He said, good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, and shall all men then give into your bosom, and for the same measure, and not to meet with all, it shall be given unto you again. But what did Paul say? Paul said, for this cause I bow on my knees unto the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ and to the whole family of heaven is the earth name that he that he would grant us according to his riches in glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit of the inner man. If a Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, and that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend all saints what breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him that is able to keep us ascend abundantly above all things we think and ask according to the power that worketh in us. See, the thing about it is everything that must be driven by love. Love is our redeeming principle. We must give out of love and of the obedience of the law. And God will multiply our return above anything that we could ever think or imagine. And that's why the farmer must love farming to be a successful farmer. Uh, and that's why uh, that love must drive him to be able to do the things he do, not knowing what the crop and the harvest going to bring. See, loving to do anything is the principle of our faith. Love drives him to sow when he doesn't know what the harvest will be. Love gets him to trust God, knowing what the end will be. I can see my dad love in selecting seed and preparing the ground and sowing the seed and cultivating the plants and, and, and weeding the plants and harvesting in his garden produce and even storing what he has harvested. Love caused my dad to respect what God had given him from, from the seed all the way to the harvest. See, when, when love is the, uh, the redeeming principle behind anything that we do in our life, God respects your efforts and he produces in you an abundant harvest. You've got to have the type of love to start anything for Christ. Paul wrote, he said that 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 uh, but but uh, he that soweth sparingly shall reap all 
also sparingly, and he which sowing abundantly shall reap also abundantly. Every morning, according to what he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, uh, uh, but a love. Uh, he that love God loveth a what? A cheerful giver. See, when God sows his love into our hearts, uh, uh, we reciprocate by giving to others freely that he purposed those things in our heart. When we love each God, we love what God does, and we reciprocate and do what God does by also giving our best. When we sow out of love, there are only a few things on earth that compare to how God blesses us, is that to have the love of Christ in our heart. you got to have that type of love. So a man is a vast a uh, field of spiritual consciousness that 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 we that's made up of all various types of ground. See, it's all it, uh, it's more than good ground in your head. You got all various types of ground that's in your head. You got good ground. You got bad ground. You got a uh, uh, red dirt. You got brown dirt. You got all kinds of stuff that's in your mind. So your mind is made up of all various types of ground. And Jesus was doing well, uh, what he does one day, and then he, he healed the ten lepers, and one came back. And Jews asked him, when he demanded of the Pharisees that the kingdom shall come, he answered and said, the kingdom of God cometh not to observation, but it shall say, lo, is here, lo, it is there. Behold, that the kingdom of God is within you. See, instead of you worrying about this celestial place that we shall go one day, the kingdom of God can be with you as, in earth as it is in heaven. We kind of believe that the kingdom of God, as well as the kingdom of words, uh, it resides in him. Uh, the world can get in him. The kingdom of God can get in here. So it depends on how you receive what is given unto you and, and allow it to reap and to harvest good things or bad things. It's all about what you receive in here. See, they made up all types of ground and vast field that is made of. And there are hills and valleys and meadows and swallows and terraces and ditches and ridges that make up the vast field that make up ground in our mind. You got some valley experiences in your mind. You got some gutter. My, do I have any people that got into the gutter? You get your mind in the gutter and you get your mind in all of the wrong places. Matthew's version of the parable introduces us to another seed that's teaching us other than the seed of the word that can be sown into the ground of our minds if we're not allowed. We've been not careful. The Bible speaks of the character of man connected to what's in your mind. And Proverbs says that if as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs also says that keep your mind, your heart uh, with all diligence and without it comes the issues of life. See, we must learn to cultivate our minds to, to think like Christ so that we can be, uh, before it become infested with some harmful thinking. And, and the, the kids call it stinking thinking. You got to keep your mind in the proper perspective, cultivated with the things of God, or you will allow some things to come into your head that you don't need to be thinking about. Paul told the church at Philippi, let this mind be in you, which is also what? In Christ Jesus. We got to have a, a Christ-like mind that, that takes some divine cultivation for you to get your mind in the right place. Our mind naturally is impure. Our mind you know, doesn't think about divine things all the time. But we need to transform our mind and to be able to get into this mind of thinking like Christ. That's why the Bible says that who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? His, his conclusion was no one. So the mind of man, according to Job, is full of trouble. And the only calm way of getting calm into this mind is to let the Christ, the mind of Christ come in and work this thing over. That's why Paul said, what? Be ye not transformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that it may prove which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. You know, the nature of this world that we are in today, uh, it, it, it's not God's intent to pattern ourselves off of this world. It pulls us away from the nature and the will of God that he wants our mind to be in. God requires us, us to have a transformation of our mind to produce the harvest and the prosperity that he has in the areas of our life. And the problem is that the condition of the ground is our responsibility. Uh, do I need to say that again? God will sow into the ground that is prepared, but the condition of the ground is our responsibility. It's our choice to conform 
or to be transformed. That's all it is. It's up to, it's up to you to make the decision. The ground that you choose for the seed of God is ready to sow into your life. That's your call. You got to make sure that the ground is right so that when God is ready to sow into your life, that you have the ground that is acceptable to be able to reap a harvest that, that, that is beneficial to the kingdom of God. So what ground does God see when he's ready to sow into your life? Huh? When, when God look into your heart, what type of ground has your heart been prepared to, to, to be able to uh, reap the benefits of the harvest that God has for your life? It's up to you. you got to have the right ground prepared. So as we come to our text, we find Jesus teaching in the synagogue at the seashore on the mountainside. And he was healing and he was casting out demons. The large crowds had followed him. And he began and again to teach by the wayside. And they gathered him a great multitude. He entered into the ship and, and, and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea and in the lands. Jesus was about to give his disciples this multitude a series of parables about teaching about uh, the kingdom thinking, the principles of the kingdom. These principles will give them a foundation about the kingdom of God, how it is built, how it is made. These principles will let them see themselves in reference to the kingdom of God and how it operates. You know, so the principle of seed time and harvest is taught today about prosperity and all of that. But the principle of seed time and harvest applies to everything. Everything in your life, it's a, it, it operates by seed time and harvest. See, our mind and the body and soul, it naturally operates according uh, 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 to, to, to divine laws, that whether you want to or not. You know, what Jesus is trying to reveal to his disciples and that multitude play highly upon our relationship that we have with God, but also our relationship that we have with mankind and our relationship with one another. What he was about to reveal to them was the principle of kingdom thinking to be able to have your mind in the bright perspective to think like God thinks and he's sowing this 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 parable about sowing it will be able to help them to understand how they get their mind in the right way so our first thought is that neither seed nor the ground can be more important in the kingdom than the sower let, let me say that again see neither the seed nor the ground can be more important than the sower. Uh, our text says that what? And he taught many things in parables, and he said unto him, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. You know, just as many types of seed in ground, there are also many sowers. Let, let's be honest about it. Can I get it there, man? There are people out there that are sowing things that don't need to be sowing things. But there are people out there in the church that we are sowing things of discord and, and division and, and rather than sowing righteousness and justice. So there are sowers out in the world, but you got to make sure that you understand who is doing the sowing. Be well who is sowing into your ground. Be well of who is sowing into your ground. The problem of the body of Christ today in the last days that we're entering that, that who is sowing as well as what seed are they sowing, huh? If you want to miss out on your kingdom blessing, keep hanging around folk that's sowing the wrong seed in your life. They will sow the wrong seeds in your life if you allow them to speak to your spirit and, and you open up your ground to be able to receive that seed. That's why Matthew 24 said that that will arise what? False Christ and false prophet. And they show you great wonders in as much if it be possible they'll deceive even the very elect. See, sores are coming. And, and, and with good sound in rhetoric and that will fool the average church goer into believing almost anything. And, and the ground is ready in the time of false sowers, sowing their deadly seed that many in the church are preparing their ground to be able to receive that knowledge. Don't, don't receive any knowledge that come into your head that ain't right. Jesus taught many things and, and about to teach them about the doctrine of the kingdom and, and he taught them this parable about the sower going out to so, see, our lives in the kingdom would be fruitless without some divine sowing going on. Seed would be, have no produce, neither will the ground without a sower. See, God is the divine sower that seeks to sow his word into our heart 
the gospel of Jesus Christ so that men will be able to grow and have produce of an abundant life with the ground that God has prepared for us if we would only be ready for it. See, these three, the sower, the seed, and the ground work together to complete that untold story of our life. See, we are blessed to be players in this trilogy of this opportunity that God has given us. We got to have the right time and chance to work out this thing so that God can get the most out of our lives. See, ground is going to be there. The seed is going to be there. But you need to be careful about who is doing the sowing. Uh, the question this morning is who's sowing into your garden? Huh? Who's sowing into your life? Who's sowing thoughts into your mind that are contrary to what God wants you to do? Huh? The ground is good. Huh? The ground is good. The ground has been prepared. But who sows into your life is most important. So you need to be careful about who's sowing. So though we fully prepared uh, for the false sword to come, many in church offers uh, fallow ground to sow into. Our text says that it came to pass and they sowed and some fell by the wayside and, and the fowls came in the air and devoured it up and some fell on, on stony ground and it came and had no earth and, and immediately sprang up but it had no death on the earth and when the sun came up it was scorched and, and because it had no root it withered away. Some fell among thorns and, and the thorns grew up and choked it out and it yielded no fruit. See the biggest problem in the church is unprepared people for the calling that God has for their lives. And we talked about Bible study on Friday night. We talked about Bible study. See, in the Protestant faith that we fail to prepare our people uh, compared to the Jehovah Witnesses or the Muslims and all of that. We, we criticize them about their beliefs. But one thing, but we can't judge them on their zeal and the knowledge of their faith. You can't judge them. They know their faith. But we in the Protestant church, in our churches today, we have so many people unprepared with the wisdom and the knowledge of God. So they're going out dealing with people sowing and not knowing what fruit or what seed is being sown into their life. See, we offer God uh, something. Sometimes the worst ground uh, of our any faith for us to sow into. Uh, the Old Testament minor prophet Hosea said, Sow uh, to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up the foul ground, and for it's time that the Lord till he come uh, to rain righteousness upon you. You have plowed wickedness and you have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies and, and because uh, thou distrust in thy way and the multitude of thy, of thy men vanity, of thy mighty men. See, it's time for the church to break up the foul ground. Break up that foul of ground. Give God something to work with. If you want God to be able to reap some things into your life and to be able to sow some stuff in your life, you got to offer him some good ground. So you need to break up that foul of ground. Get into the word. Get into prayer. Help somebody. Turn your life around. Learn to get along with one another. Jesus gives us uh, three types of ground that represents the hearts of mankind in our text this morning. He said the first type is wayside ground. Wayside Christian. Have you ever seen folks just wayside hanging around the edges and, and want to be able to take charge and want to order things and, and get things to operate into your life? So those Christians, they skirt along the edge and they, they walk the edge of their faith and try to get by with everything they can do. You know, they can't uh, 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 receive the great benefits of God by hanging by the wayside. We got so wayside folks, hey, nothing sticks. Now, I don't want to get into too much detail because Jesus gives us the details in our next lesson. you got to quit hanging around the wayside and expect to get the greatest benefits of God's blessings in your life. And then our next type of ground, he said that those are stone-hearted Christians. We got some stone-hearted folk in the body of Christ. Stone-hearted folk. M Moses called them a, a hard-hearted or, or stiff-necked Christians. We got folk that are stiff-necked, don't want to understand the world, and they just don't want to do it. They're going to do what they want to do in spite of what they want to do. The word just can't find a place to take root in it. Have you ever seen folk, you can tell them what to do all you want, and they won't stick? Those are those those are stony hearted Christians. You know they, they they church hop until they find a place that fits them, and and then once they find a place to fit them, and once the word come and started convicting them, they leave and go somewhere else. Those those are the type of Christians they are. They they they're the type of Christians that don't want to have things their way. And as long as things are their way, they're good. But if things don't go their way, they they leave and go somewhere else. That's, those are stone-hearted Christians. And then you got the crapgrass Christians. 
crap grass Christians. These are church folk that you listen to other folk. And then they get choked out uh, before they even get the word of God in their heart. These are grown folk acting like children. God is sowing into their lives all three of these type of Christians. But the very little spiritual growth happens because the ground is fallow. It's fallow ground. You can't sow among thorns and thistles and rocks and wayside. You're casting your pearls among swine. Why are you casting your seed out there when it ain't going to stick? It ain't going to stick. So nothing but ditches and rocks and weeds are presented to God to sow into when you should be giving to him your best. Give God the best ground to sow into so that you can be able to reap the benefits of the blessings of God in your life. See, the thing Jeremiah said, he said that men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up that foul of ground, sow not among thorns, Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury will come like fire and burn that none can quench because of the evil of your doings. The seed was ready. Listen to me now. The seeds were ready, but the ground was fouler. Huh? That, he said, clean up your hearts. Huh? And, and, and which is the ground that God desires to sow into? His warning carries some, uh, some uh, reprisals. He said, break up or lest the fury of God will come. And to be able to burn up everything without any quenching going on. And we need to take fair warning of the church. Else God is going to come and leash out his judgment on us. He said, judgment starts at the church first. So he's telling us to break up that foul ground. Give God some adequate ground to sow into. Get your mind in the right perspective so that God can sow into your heart and your mind to be able to reap some good things out of it. And then this brings the good news. It's good news. See, I, I was hard, but this good news. Good news he preserved for those who have good ground. Our text says that, and then other fell on what? Good ground. And did yield fruit, and that sprang up and increased, and brought forth in some in thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. And he said unto him, He that has an ear, let him hear. See, sometimes it's hard to find good ground even in the church, ain't it? Hard to find people with good ground to sow into. The world has become so corrupt that at times we wonder if there are any ground to be found anywhere where the Lord can sow into. Um, people speak in Second Thessalonians 2 that they're, they're, there's a great falling away from the church. See, folk are falling away from the church, but even those in the church are falling away from living according to the will and the words of God. We are falling away from the faith. Not falling away from the church. We are falling away from the faith. Even those that look bad. The Bible always, when you're speaking of a remnant, Paul said that even so then that the present time that there is a remnant, even according to the election of grace. See, no matter how bad things look, God got to preserve remnant. And that's the good news. That, that, that will present good ground to be able to sow into where God will be able to reap. He said, some 30 some sixty, but some a hundredfold. See, see, that that, but but, but God will encourage us that that in times like these we will be able to reap the good things. See, there's not all brown bad ground in the church. I said there is bad ground, but that's not all bad ground in the church. I can name some mean folk and some spiteful folk that have been in the church, but I know some good folk. Some good folks that God will allow them have presented them to him good ground to be able to sow into. God has those that he will be able to preserve in a time like this that God can depend on. Oh, can God depend on you? Have you offered God the good ground to be able to sow into so that you can be able to reap the benefits of the kingdom of God? Have your mind have been put in the right perspective in that kingdom thinking to be able to have yourself ready for the word of God to be sown into you so that you can be able to reap the benefits that God has prepared for you. Those that believe that personal study, that private devotion, that Bible study, that Sunday school, he said study to show yourself approved. And, 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 and then he said that the good ground that God is looking for, he's looking for the sow into those that have studied it, prayed and obeyed the word of God. Those who have promised to sow in an additional promises of productive yield that man manifold blessings that God has bestowed before us, those are the ones that God is looking to be able to benefit and to be able to carry on the gospel. In order for you to be able to sow into somebody else, you got to have a harvest, a reaping of, of good produce. My daddy used to save 
the seed of the corn from the next year out of good years of corn? Do you have any good years of corn in your life that come from the harvest that God has sown into you to be able to sow into somebody else's life? God wants you to be able to produce other good fruit. Disciples make other disciples. So have you been able to produce the good harvest because of the good ground that you presented unto God to sow his seed into so that you can be able to reap a harvest to produce great things in other people's lives. So as we close this morning, uh, what ground have you prepared for God to sow into? What ground uh, can you imagine the areas of your life that is outside of the will of God that you need to cultivate to get back in alignment with God's word? Are you hard-hearted? Are you hard-headed? Are you stiff-necked that you have not been able to allow uh, the ground in your life to be prepared good enough where God can be able to sow in and get an adequate harvest? Huh? Are you sticky briars that, that that choke out everything that God has put in your life? In all your areas of your life uh, makes it so difficult that God can be able to sow the greatness of you down inside of you. Uh, we, we need to be able to get some rocks and, and, and some things out of our way so that God can sow into some good ground. It's God's desire for us to prosper. But if we don't present to him the right mindset in the body and soul prepared of good ground so that the gospel can come inside of us to be able to produce those great things. We need to break up those fallow grounds. Hey, clean up those rocks and, and ch hey, chop up those thistles and thorns that have been weeded up in our lives so that we can be able to be the good ground that God can come present. And the David said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of God, and nor standeth in the seat of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and thus he meditated on the day and night. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of waters, and that he shall not wither, whosoever that he prosper. See, don't, don't you want to be planted in such a way to produce the greatness that God has in store for you? Don't you want to be planted beside those waters that will be able to nurture you and give you the things that you would need to be able to produce the great harvest that God has prepared for your life. I'm like David, creating me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit that is in me. I know that that's the ground that God can sow into and he will give you the promises to prosper you in the kingdom of God. There is no better ground than a clean heart and a right spirit. Get your spirit right. Get your heart right so that God can be able to sow into you and get the greatness out of the ground that God prepared for you. So church, it's time for us to start getting up here right, getting in here right. Get your heart and your mind right so that God can be able to sow into you those things that will be able to produce the greatest harvest that you have prepared for your life. As a poem said, when the seeds had been sowed beside the road, it couldn't be snatched away. And y'all wonder where on earth it went and you had it yesterday. When your seeds are sown on rocket place, it's received with joy at first. And as soon as affliction comes your way, things go from bad to worse. And when your heart's been sown among the thorns, you almost say, uh, but it's not quite. But the things of the world uh, means more to you and is not fixed in its sight. But when the seeds are sown on good soil, the spirit lives in you. The fruits of the Spirit are evident in you, all you say and you do. So God has your seed for you to bless you. He's given it unto you to prosper you. And what old Norman Hutchins said, he said, with your name on it, God got some blessings out there with your name on it. If you would only prepare your heart and your mind and the soul to be the good ground that he can sow into. God wants to sow greatness down into you, but you got to prepare the vessel, the ground that has been restored unto you to be good ground enough to be able to receive and to nurture and to re reap a harvest that will be beneficial to you and the kingdom of God. So you to be able to have this mindset, you got to get your heart and your mind in the right perspective. Uh, do you want to be blessed by God this morning, huh? Do you want a blessing? Do you need a blessing in your life? Uh, do you want a blessing? He's got to bless you with a, a good mind and a good heart and a good soul. God got blessings out there with your name on it. But in order for to receive those blessings, you got to have the ground prepared. Uh, the seed and the ground must be ready to be able to uh, get the blessings that God has bestowed. So beware of the sower. Um, get your ground in the right place. 
huh? Then be able to reap the harvest of manifold blessings that God has for your life. Huh? Kingdom blessings by having your mind and your heart in the right perspective. God want to bless you, but are you are you having your mind and your and your heart and your soul prepared to be the good ground where God can sow into and reap the greater harvest? Uh, get your mind in the right place. God bless you. And may heaven up a smile upon you. Our phone is blinking. The battery is going dead. But God is going to bless us anyway. Let us bow in prayer. Father God, we do thank you for this day. Hopefully we've said some things to encourage us to get our mind in the right perspective. Get the seed in the ground receptive to be able to have the greater harvest that God has prepared for us. Be careful of who sows in our life. Have the ground ready for the seed. And be careful of what seed we allow to be sown into our life. Make sure that it is the word of God. Once the word of God is sown into our life, we'll be able to reap the greater harvest that God has for us. God bless you and may heaven ever smile upon you. If there's one that does not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we ask that you would just, he said, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. He, then he said, thou shalt be saved. God bless you. May heaven ever smile upon you. We'll see you again next week. Be blessed.